that Jesus has done for us, all that God has done for us in Christ. Everyone is welcome. Everyone who seeks to follow Jesus Christ as a disciple. If you love God, repent of your sin, and seek to live in peace as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you are welcome to come to his table. He invites you. Whether you've been coming here all your life or it's your first time here visiting, God is inviting you to come to the table and meet with him. God calls you to come. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. 
when we had turned aside from your way and abused your gift, you gave us in him your crowning gift. Emptying himself that our joy might be full, he fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with the scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, and he gave it to his disciples. He said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. From now on, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Shall we pray together with the confidence of the children of God, the prayer Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Will those who are serving please come forward?
Jesus invites you to come to the table, the table he set on Monday, Thursday, as he was betrayed, as he was abandoned. Before we come to Good Friday, we come to the table. Come and join us.
strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now Judas, the betrayer, had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say that it must happen this way? At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Then seizing Jesus, they led him away. Peter followed at a distance. Are you not going to answer? What are these charges they're bringing against you? I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us, are you the Christ, the Son of God? Yes, it is as you say. But I say to all of you, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One, coming on the clouds of heaven. He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? You have all heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death! And they took him off to see Pilate.
The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken to him, saying, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Then the whole assembly rose and led them off to Pilate. The people began to accuse him, saying, This man claims to be the king of the Jews. Are you king of the Jews? Yes, it is as they said. You hear the testimony they bring against you? You may now speak in your defense. You must speak now. You must defend yourself. You must say something to save yourself. What sort of man are you? Say something! It is customary to release a prisoner to you at the feast. Who shall I release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? Barabbas. 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 Which of the two Barabbas. shall I release to you? Barabbas. 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 What then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? Crucify him. Crucify him. Why? What crime has this man committed? Crucify him. blood is on your hands. <clears throat> Pilate then released Barabbas to the crowd, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified.
When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He, he saved, saved others. Let, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him. I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to his disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy 
would come to make us new. This child that you delivered would soon deliver you. Somebody said that's a Christmas song. Christmas. We love the Christmas story, don't we? Mary was a virgin. And an angel named Gabriel appeared to her and said a child would be born to her. She said, how can this be since, since I'm a virgin? He said the Holy Spirit would come upon her and she would become great with child and her child would grow to save the nation. And she said, let it be. Let it be to me as you have said. Mary became pregnant. And she went to visit her cousin, Elizabeth. And as soon as she got near the house, the baby inside of Elizabeth started leaping with joy. And Elizabeth said about her, Blessed are you among women and the child that you will bear. Mary. Mary has been one of the most fascinating characters in the biblical story and in the church for generations. Some churches almost worship her. And some churches so afraid that they'll look that they worship her, ignore her as if she's not there. And yet, she is the most blessed woman who ever lived. The Christmas story. Do you remember that Christmas night? They took the journey. We like to think that she was riding on a donkey. I think that would be absurd for a woman who is nine months pregnant, but I've never been nine months pregnant, so I really can't say for sure. Remember they got to Bethlehem, and, and, and they were looking for a room, and there's that, 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 that little boy in a, in a, in a shepherd's uh, robe, bathrobe or so that says, there's no room in the inn for you. We don't really have that in the Bible, but we love that in our stories. She was told there was no room. So the baby Jesus was born in a barn and laid in a manger, a feeding trough. For animals and the shepherds came and the angels appeared and it said in the Bible Mary pondered these things and held them deep in her heart we all know that story don't we I know it because I preach on it every year Year after year after year. I've preached on that passage of the Bible probably 35 times. I know that part of the story. But do you know what happened just after that? She took the baby to the temple to be dedicated. They ran across a couple of older people. One named Anna, a prophetess, and the other, Simeon. And it it says in the book of Luke, when the time came for the purification required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves and two young pigeons. And there was a man there in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout, and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him. Now, I want you to imagine. You just gave birth to this little baby, and some old man comes up and takes your child. 
I would be pretty much kind of freaking out right then, wouldn't you? He took him in his arms and he praised God. He said, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you have now dismissed your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. A light for the revelations to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's mother and father marveled at this. And at what Simeon said about him. And then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, the mother, this child is destined to call the falling, cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign to be spoken, that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And they saw, said this curious thing to Mary. He said, and a sword will pierce your soul. I hope none of you mothers who give birth to a child ever have some old man take your child and say to you, a sword will pierce your soul. Disturbing words. Disturbing words. He grew. They moved to Egypt because it was dangerous for them to stay in Israel at that time. And then they went to Nazareth, where they sort of kept a low profile. Except that every year they would go to the temple in Israel for a pilgrimage. One time, Jesus stayed behind when everybody left. Now, there were quite a few people, I'm sure, in the entourage. And the family had, you know, four boys and girls. And, you know, they probably just missed him. But they got a day away before they realized he was gone. And his frantic mother Mary said, where is he? And it says they went searching for him. Two, three days, they searched the city of Jerusalem. Can you imagine what Mary felt at that time? Where is he? Is he safe? Did somebody do something to him? And they found him in the temple courts where they said, what are you doing? And he said, well, where else would I be but in my father's house? I don't know what Joseph thought of that. Probably not very well, but Mary pondered these things. Years passed. We don't see much about the story. I assume that Mary and Joseph had a mother and son relationship that we know was there because she appears throughout the story and the next time... They're at a wedding. I love this story, don't you? They're at a wedding. They've been drinking for days, it appears, and they've run out of wine. Now, if you've ever put on a wedding banquet, you buy a lot of wine. And they ran out. And his mother's embarrassed for the family, so she comes to Jesus and says, they've run out of wine. And Jesus says, yeah, so? What's that got to do with me? Now, it doesn't say anything in the passage after that, except that she tells the people to go and do whatever he says. I always believed there was a look. You know what I mean? When he said that, she, he got the look from Mama. I can't do the look. I'm a man. But you all know what the look is. You've either gotten it or given it. And I think Jesus got the look. Because right after that, he made so much wine, it would fill garbage cans full. I mean, he made more wine than they could ever need. And it was good wine. Because his mother, Mary, asked him to. Hmm. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm? With his hand, did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss this little baby, you kiss the face of God. Years passed again. Mary felt that things were getting out of hand. 
The crowds were pressing against Jesus and just giving him no rest. He, he seems to not even been talking sensibly. He's talking so much about God. He's doing amazing things, but she's worried. So she calls her other sons, James, Jose, Jude, Simon. We're going to get your brother and we're bringing him home. I think Jesus might have lost his mind. It's in the Bible. He's acting what they thought was a little deranged. She was worried about him. But he wouldn't go. He belonged to his disciples now. He belonged to the crowd. He belonged to the world. He said, who are my mother, my brothers, my sisters, those who do the work of God? And Mary disappears from the pages of Scripture. From here on out, we don't see her. She's gone. I often wondered what those words that we know were meant for us how they felt for a mother's heart. Who's my mother? I'm your mother. And then we see her on Friday night. And we remember Simeon's word, a sword will pierce your heart, Mary. Mary, did you know that your baby boy now hangs for all creation? Mary, can you see that your baby boy is bleeding for the nations? Can you see that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? This little child you carry on the cross the great I am. She's watching her baby die. Die. The baby that, that was in the manger is dying a brutal death. Where are all these followers of his? Where are all these disciples? Where's Peter? Where's his brothers? There's no one there. Mary, a couple of other women, her, his, her sister-in-law, and John. John showed up. John was there. And the last words Mary heard from her son were, Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. He's carrying the sins of the world. He's, he's saving the world, dying in agony. And he says, take care of my mom. Did Jesus love his mother? Take care of my mom. The world can wait a minute. Take care of my mom. Do you think God cares about you? That he's too busy taking care of the universe to take care of you? In the midst of dying for the world, he took care of Mary. He'll take time for us too. So we have this picture of Mary, and, and I have it, we all have it, that she was weeping. And, and falling apart. I know I would. She probably did for a little while. But she stayed there. And she hears her boy say, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the Roman soldiers are like, this guy's given up. The people around are saying, he's crying for Elijah. Mary's saying, I know that. That's Psalm 22. Look it up when you get home. 
It's a description of the cross, of Jesus dying on the cross. And we all know which psalm comes after Psalm 22. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. In my mind, I think Mary remembered the words. She said so long ago, let it be to me as you have said. Her son used words almost the same. Dear Lord, I don't want to take this cup, but if it need to be, let it be to me as you want it to be. And at the cross, it doesn't say Mary was crumpled on her knees, that she was, she was prostrate in pain. It says that Mary was standing at the foot of the cross. Standing at the foot of the cross. And I just somehow feel she was whispering to her son, let it be. You can do this. You can do this. Oh, probably sounds wrong. I remember a song so long ago when I find myself in times of trouble. Mother Mary comes to me speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me speaking words of wisdom. That's a mother. That's a woman blessed among all women. Jesus saw his mother. And I believe, I believe he took strength and went on to save the world. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing around there heard this, they said, He's, He's calling, calling Elijah. Elijah. Later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on the stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When Jesus had received the drink, he said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit.
When he had spoken these final words, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely he was the Son of God. Jesus died at what we call 3 p.m. in the afternoon. This afternoon, I was sitting right there at 3 p.m. I came for our vigil, and I came and complained to God about everything that I don't like about my life. And then I looked at the cross, and I thought, how ashamed I must be that I worry about my little things when Jesus took everything broken about me on him. When he took all your sins, the old world sins, when he took our brokenness. And I prayed. Dear God in heaven, We have failed. We have failed to be what we should be. We're so worried about us. When you've done everything for us. We get caught up in our own little things. And you've given us everything. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive us all. Let this be the night of victory over our brokenness, over our sin. Help us to be a strength for you, as Mary was. Help us to be a people for you. Help us to be what you need us to be. We're so sorry. You had to suffer for us. Forgive us, Lord. Free the world from sin. Bring your peace and your wonder. In Jesus' name. Your name. As evening approached, there came a rich, rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. 
Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb, and he went away. 